Kelly has co-authored a very successful book on streamer fishing, written another book on spinners and cripples, and completed a new fly tying tape, Tying Spinners and Cripples. Kelly today is going to tie a new streamer of his called the Puff Daddy. We're going to do the Gallops TNA here, and it's a very. I'm working on a triggering instinct. I'm, I'm not looking for hungry fish so much as I am. I'm trying to elicit a strike, and I'm trying to tap into the dark side of this little predatory brain, saying something's trying to escape and something's trying to get away. And the reason that the fly is designed the way it is, and the way I'm using this erratic return is to try to make it look like it's got a problem, like it's injured somewhat. And if you're injured and you're fleeing from something, you're not going to run upstream in a real... You're going to try to go downstream to get away. Screamers like red-headed stepchildren. They just... They don't want to... They don't want to fish them. They, they kind of, it's always a, a last resort, if you will. You know, they say, well, nothing was happening, so I threw on a streamer. And you can almost finish the story and BAM! I got the biggest fish in my life, you know? And we tried to just make it so people would... If nothing's happening, you're not... You don't have a... Gotcha. How deep am I, Chris? Way to go! Here, this, uh, this net. Right under everything. Okay. All right. We're Watch the oar. I'm ready. Lift him up. All right! Yeah, there to go, that. Kelly! There's a box canyon streamer, rainbow trout. Look dark to me. Inches, probably three and a half, four pounds. Dark to me. There he is, look at that. All right, I've seen him here before. Okay, catch and release, catch and release. All right. There you go, Kelly. Nice job. Another streamer company. We had the uh, Puff Daddy or the TNA and the Zoo Cougar. I mean, you, you can't have that, that many crazy names left. This one's the Stacked Blonde. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> Just tie the thing. Right? <laughs> this was this fly was a takeoff of my hero Joe Brooks fly. Actually, it wasn't his fly, but he popularized it. The Blonde. Blonde. Guy. Absolutely. And I wanted that fly with a little more bulk to it, and I stacked three hairs. So the stacked blood. Oh, yeah. And it's a mostly deer hair. And I'm gonna take this bucktail. And I do this in white, yellow, and chartreuse. But yellow has accounted for probably the highest number of big fish. And this the, the thing about this is if you're gonna fish a long time, a long day, it, it this fly when you cast it, it jettisons its water very quickly. So it's not heavy like my right. cougar or the kiwi or yeah. something that holds a lot of water. This one's almost like casting a leader, so it's really nice. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tie this first clump in, and you see how long this fly is. Right. It's already almost five inches long just from the first piece, and it's in the back here. And I'm not gonna worry too much about this taper. I am gonna taper it off just a little bit here and tie it in, and I'm gonna pinch it down a little bit. I haven't really started to cinch it down yet. I'm just doing progressively tighter wraps as I go. Notice you got a different hook there. Yeah, it's a keel hook. Keel it's hook. Uh, the keel hooks, uh, that's that's why it's a stack. Uh, and I'm just going back over that a little bit, just to tighten it up a little bit. The stacks, it allows, this is going to allow me to put uh, multiple stacks in here to build the, the width of the 
imitation of the fly. And, uh, what, and so, what brand of hook is it? It's a mustad. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I remember that hook. It's it's an old old hook. Actually, they quit making the regular keels and went to, just to the stainless. Now I'm just going to put a, a the second stack. It'll be the second of three. Well, there's there's four total. This is the second one. And with this one, I've got I trim that at a little angle, just because it's so it lays in there. And then I, what I do is I pull the thread off to the side, and then I do a a real loose wrap here, one, two, and then I push that hair up through there and tighten it down. And I'm going to take that right to the base of the bend there, come back up, and you can see, I'm going to pull that tight. So now I've got my second stack, it's right in the middle, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to split this so it comes back. So there's the second one. I'm advancing this thread down to the bottom and I'll take another and it, you're looking for the longest possible hair on the on these tails. I mean they don't all have really really long hair uh, but you're just just digging around trying to find the the longest possible hair on there. And this one's been used up pretty well. I've been cutting on it. And you Clean that same thing you do with deer hair when you're spinning it. Clean out the short hairs. I'm going to clean out. So now I'm going to turn this. That's the beauty of the rotary. Right. I'm going to turn this upside down. And I like to have a pretty broad head on these. I cut this on a reverse angle so the shortest hairs are the, on the bottom and the longest ones are closest to the eye. So I get a nice, comp you know, it's non compressible hair. So you got to, it's not, not hollow hair. So I've got a, I'm working forward, just tightening those down. Trim those little excess hairs out of there. And we've still got a lot to do here as far as building this head, but nice and tight. So it's really compressed here. Using right. a good broad? Using right. GX tube, good broad, yep. And I've got a couple little strays there. Now this is the fourth one. This stack is more to just tidy up this stuff. It has really no bearing. The original ones I did, I didn't do this to, but this one's just a little bit of fluff. I mean, it is a blonde, by the way. <laughs> Needs a little fluff, but this one just goes kind of through here to, to kind of make the, it does two things. One, it makes the head broader, and you know, minnows have got a pretty broad head, and I'm doing the same thing with the reverse. This one's a little harder to get your fingers around because of the keel. But I'm separating that hair to go around this, just to kind of, there we go. And I'm just going to bring this down right to the end, right to the eye. Then I'm just going to take this back. I'm starting to get, so that just kind of cleaned yeah. up, added a little bit. Yep. Little bit now I'm going to take a couple of marabou, plumes of marabou, longest ones I can find, same color. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to lay those right dead in the middle on the top. Now I've got two, three secure wraps. And I just make sure that everything's right on the top and that the feathers are not rolled in any way. And notice I, I held that with my left hand, the marabou, mm -hmm. and then I adjusted it with my, while well, holding tension onto this feather, I can kind of shift them back and, and forth around. wherever I want. And so then I'm just going to go forward halfway. I'm not going to take those all the way to the eye because I want to create a taper there. And so now I'm just going to, now it's just a matter of a buildup. I'm just going to keep adding thread here, smooth, nice smooth wraps, trying to get a nice clean, even taper to this. And that's the beauty of this flat thread is I get a nice, Smooth. There. Then I'm going to whip this down. Okay. And then I'll cut this off. And when I was in Michigan, this, this fish, or this fly, I counted for more really big fish, say 25 and above, than all my other flies for me personally. Including the, uh, including the cougar. Including the cougar. This one, 
I fished this fly as long as, uh, I've done it as big as seven inches long.